Hello, skeptical people of the world. There's been a request made to me by you guys to talk about this topic. Apparently, there's another pseudoscientific claim out there about cancer. Surprise, surprise. This time, it's on hydrogen peroxide. You know, that chemical that can kill you. <laughs> oh boy. Hydrogen peroxide and cancer. This is what you must know. Beat cancer with 35% hydrogen peroxide. So that's pretty much going to be the style of the rest of the video. They just put a bunch of text on screen and then have a robotic voice narrate it. I normally try to avoid low effort videos like this, but this video has hundreds of thousands of views with a very high like to dislike ratio, so I had to respond. Too many people are watching this and probably believe what it's saying, so let's break down the video. Cancer is dangerous. Don't flirt with disaster. Don't eat it and don't go near it. Don't drink it. Don't put it on your skin. Yes. This is a warning not to put cancer on or inside your body. So just from that you can tell that whoever wrote this script isn't very knowledgeable on cancer. You don't just find tumor cells lying around outside. It's not just chilling on your table. You don't really get cancer from the environment, so these warnings are meaningless. In addition, if you somehow get, let's say, injected with a cancer cell, you still will likely not develop cancer. Maybe though, if you inject cancer stem cells. That's actually what scientists do with mice in laboratories, but it has to be quite specific. That's just not something anyone as a human will really have to deal with. Cancer is in GMO pesticide DNA seed designs and the treatments used on vegetables and fruit. <laughs> okay, at this point if you said that GMOs and pesticides cause cancer, it'd be more believable. But having the cancer cells literally just fucking sit on your food is just ridiculous. Cancer is in sunblock lotions full of toxins that hold in your sweat and block out the vitamin D you would normally get from the sun. Ah, another video claiming that sunblock is bad for you. Yes, it does prevent your body from producing more vitamin D, but it also shields a lot of the harmful effects your sun would have on your skin. And what are these toxins you speak of that are in sunscreen? Guess what? If sunscreen is used, that would actually decrease your chances of skin cancer. So this video is literally heading in the opposite direction of reality. Cancer is in cosmetics, makeup, soaps, toothpaste and shampoos. The fuck? Are you telling people not to use soap and toothpaste? Yeah, let me just rot my teeth real quick so I don't get cancer. Cancer may be lurking in your refrigerator, your pantry and in your medicine cabinet. Okay, answer me this. What doesn't have cancer on it? Where does cancer not lurk? Let me guess, in bottles of hydrogen peroxide. But it has an arch enemy. Cancer has a rival that destroys it like an M60 leveling a field of enemy soldiers. <laughs> okay, anything that is that potent to cancer cells will surely destroy healthy cells too. It's called hydrogen peroxide, and the lamestream, mainstream media will tell you how dangerous it is at 35%, but they won't tell you that you can drip a couple drops in a glass of water each day and end cancer. Yes, it's true. Oh yes, it's true. You can end cancer by ending yourself. Okay, so hydrogen peroxide being able to treat cancer isn't something completely new. People have been claiming that this is a magical cure for cancer for a while now, and so far I have heard a few different claims on how this mechanism works. The first and most common one will be described in the video, so I'll go over that later. The second method alternative medicine proponents claim is that it helps the immune system, since the immune system uses hydrogen peroxide as a defense mechanism against pathogens. While yes, certain immune cells do utilize hydrogen peroxide, it is controlled inside the cells to break down bacteria after engulfing them. You can't create a large amount of H2O2, and you can't have it be uncontrolled in the tissue environment. Sure, it will kill pathogens, but it will also kill your own cells, which is why it is used only in certain conditions. Now this video has another idea on how hydrogen peroxide can cure your cancer, so let's have a listen. Cancer thrives in an acid-heavy system, where the blood and the organs are flooded with processed salt, sugar, animal fat and artificial food. Like I've said many times in previous videos, yes, the immediate surrounding areas of tumors are slightly more acidic compared to the rest of the body, but increasing pH isn't going to solve the problem. And I don't see why you brought up processed salt, whatever that means, sugar, and animal fats. Do you believe these items make your blood more acidic or something? It's a common trend that alternative medicine opposes processed foods and encourages the consumption of fruits and vegetables, and I'm all for that. They do promote healthy eating. What I don't like is when they spread lies about diet. The heart and brain struggle to filter out the toxins found in most conventional forms of food, like antibiotics, hormones, pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, bleach, ammonia, fluoride, heavy metals and much more. Okay, well, it's not really your brain or your heart's job to filter these things out. That's more for the kidneys. Your brain does have a blood-brain barrier, though, which can help protect itself against hydrophilic substances. But anyway, it seems that you sort of change your stance here. Does cancer exist in the processed foods you spoke of, or is it the chemicals you named that cause cancer? Consistency is a good thing, you know. This is why the doctors and oncologists tell chemo patients not to eat alkalizing foods like kale, because it will interfere with the chemotherapy. God forbid you should try to alkalize all that acid that's killing your good cells. 
Do oncologists tell patients not to eat kale? That's the first time I've heard of that. But no, the acid isn't what's killing your good cells. Yes, the immediate surrounding area of tumors is more acidic, but that doesn't apply to the whole body. Here's the thing, if you ingest too much alkalizing agents like baking soda, you can damage your own cells. Healthy cells cannot thrive in an environment that is too basic, which is why there's a condition out there called alkalosis, which is when your body's pH is too high. Most cancer patients die as a result of the chemotherapy and radiation damage to their non-cancerous cells. In other words, your good cells that are trying to help your body beat cancer are deprived of oxygen also, leading to new cancers and often death within 5 years. Chemotherapy and radiation are not pleasant, especially chemotherapy. It can attack rapidly dividing healthy cells too, which is why chemo patients can feel pretty awful when being administered the treatment. However, it is working to mostly kill the tumor cells, and harm to your own body is a cost to this treatment, and it is worth it. If you can live from cancer and go through a period of time on chemo, I'd say it's worth it. Suffer a little bit so that you don't die. Unless, of course, if your cancer is too advanced, and treatment will likely only give you a low rate of survival, then maybe some people will choose not to take treatment and live the rest of their lives pain-free. That's up to the discretion of the patient and the doctor. But if you're young and you found the cancer early, I don't see why undergoing a bit of suffering should discourage someone from surviving. Just my opinion. Oh, and also, this video claimed that your healthy cells are oxygen deprived, which simply isn't the case, so let's just stop thinking oxygen is the solution to everything. Oh, cancer cells are thriving? They're not exposed to oxygen. Oh, you don't feel so well? Your own cells are deprived of oxygen. This element isn't the key to cancer. And this brings us to the second method in which these people think hydrogen peroxide can cure cancer, that it supposedly increases oxygen levels in the blood. The most overlooked solution to all manner of illness and disease is perhaps the simplest. All pathogens, viruses, and parasites are anaerobic. They thrive in the absence of oxygen, but cannot survive with an abundance of oxygen. I think just calling them anaerobic is quite dangerous. Not only is that not true, there are multiple different types of anaerobes. Facultative anaerobes, for example, like E. coli, will grow in oxygen but can thrive without it too. And there are plenty of examples out there. So your statement that all pathogens cannot survive in the presence of oxygen is just flat out false. And also, what does this have to do with cancer? You're talking about pathogens now, or are you going to circle back? Even cancer cells cannot exist in oxygen. They depend on fermenting glucose to survive and multiply. But here's the thing, they can survive in oxygen. In fact, hypoxia, which is the state of being oxygen deprived, triggers a mechanism in cancer cells to undergo angiogenesis, which is the recruitment of blood vessels. Have you ever seen a tumor being removed from a patient during surgery? It's usually very, very bloody. So normally tumors are not deprived of a blood supply, which means, you guessed it, they're usually not deprived of oxygen either. What should you do, whether you have cancer or not? Alkalize your body, that's what. Now keep in mind, Hydrogen peroxide does not rebuild the immune system or repair the cells damaged by toxic chemo, however, there's no better time to welcome that change of season for the regeneration of new cells, skin, hair and organ cells than right now. Right, so you're implying that hydrogen peroxide can regenerate your cells. Wonderful. Yet another wacky claim, H2O2 will actually damage your cells. It can react with a ton of things, especially the mitochondria. Ingesting of too much hydrogen peroxide can lead to blistering, abdominal pain, vomiting, etc. It's just not a good experience. See, I hate alternative medicine that just gives you something that won't really do anything to you. However, I absolutely despise alternative medicine that can actually pose harm to the user, and hydrogen peroxide falls under the latter. Getting enough hydrogen peroxide inside the cancer cells is key. It has been clinically demonstrated that the spread or metastasis of cancer is inversely proportional to the amount of oxygen around the cancer cells. Clinically proven? Where's the proof? Show me the proof! That means that the more oxygen, the slower the cancer spreads. Conversely, the less oxygen, the faster the cancer spreads. If cancer cells get enough oxygen, they will die. Hydrogen peroxide kills cancer cells because cancer cells do not have the mechanism to break down the hydrogen peroxide and stop it from doing its work. <sighs> okay, your body normally does have a mechanism to help neutralize small levels of hydrogen peroxide, which I won't get into now, but it's not going to help when you're chugging a bottle of hydrogen peroxide. Please don't do that. Hydrogen peroxide can turn into radicals in your body, and we all know what that means. Yep, it reacts to stuff. And what happens when it reacts with their DNA? Yeah, that's right, it will increase your chances of cancer. Hydrogen peroxide can cause cancer. Talk about the irony. Here you are trying to promote that H2O2 will cure cancer, but instead it can be a factor that causes it. So in conclusion, don't 
don't follow this video's advice. Don't drink hydrogen peroxide. It will cause a lot of digestive irritation. It will increase your chances of tumors and it won't cure your cancer. If you have cancer and you want to be treated, go see a doctor. Your doctor will give you the right treatment plan, so just take his or her advice. Before I go, I would like to verbally thank Nathan Gower and Fireshirt for being the current two highest patrons, as well as Garrett Renault, Ada Furball, and The Earth is Flat for also being some of the top pledgers. Your generosity will help combat ignorance and hopefully will make the world a better place. Thank you so much.